Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I just want to thank the Lord for another brand new Sabbath day. What a joy it is to be in the house of prayer one more time. Are y'all glad about it? Are you glad about it? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I am more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ our Lord. I am the head and not the tail. I am above and not beneath. I am blessed in the city and in the field. I am blessed when I come and when I go. I am a lender and not a borrower. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and of a sound mind. I am what God says I am. Let's give God a praise right now. I am what God says I am. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for blessing us to enter into your gates one more time. Thank you for our early rising on this day. Thank you for clothing us in our right minds. Thank you for our health and our strength. Thank you, Lord, for being a way-making God for us, Lord. Even when our backs were against the wall, Lord God, you showed us that you were still in control. You worked things out for us, Lord, and we're grateful. We ask, Lord God, that as we enter into your presence today, that we will keep our minds and our hearts stayed on you. Lord, we've come to receive a blessing from on high. Lord, we don't know what you're going to do, but we are ready, Lord, for whatever you do in this place today. Lord, we ask that you will send us a word from on high that will edify the body of Christ. We pray, Father God, that your Holy Ghost will come and move in a mighty way in this place. Lord, I pray that you will give us, Lord, a divine unction of your Holy Ghost. Fill us, Lord, until we overflow. And Father God, let your will be done in this place today. We lift up our speaker of the hour. Lord, give her a word that will bless us, I pray. And for all the praises, all the songs and prayers, the word and everything that will be done in this place, let it give you glory in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy. Thank you, Lord, for your grace. Thank you, Lord, for being the God that loves us in spite of our sins. Thank you, Lord, for another day. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm grateful, Lord. So many started out this week, Lord, and they didn't live to see this day, Lord. But you spared our lives, and I'm mighty grateful. I don't take it lightly, Lord God. I, I thank you, Lord. Lord, I have come, Lord, with my heart ready to praise you and to worship you in spirit and in truth. Bless us now as we call this service to order in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Turn me up just a little bit, please. We want to welcome each one of you to the house of prayer here at Turning Point once again. We welcome those of you that are joining us by internet. We pray that you will receive a divine blessing from the Lord. I welcome you in the I welcome you to our services and we'd like to also send a shout out to Pastor Arnett in her absence. She's viewing by internet. And we just want to let you know how much we love you, how much we miss you. And we thank God for what God is doing for our daughter Monica. And we're just asking your continued prayers for her. And throughout our services today, we want to just be in prayer for Monica. She's, she had a good day yesterday and she rested well last night. And I'm grateful and we take one day at a time. And I'm thankful for what God is doing for her. We also want to lift up in prayer Elder Gowdy. Uh, she's over at the Merritt Health Facility, and we just want to pray for her and just pray that God will touch her body with healing from the crown of her head down to the sole of her feet. 
And we know that God is able. And we're just going to believe that God's going to br bring her through. Amen, church? Amen, amen, amen. We're going to now ask our praise team to come as they sing Zion's songs. Just go on and praise him, amen. It don't start when we get up. There's a little song I love to sing. It just said, let us worship. Let us pray. If you know it, y'all come on, sing it with us. Come, let us worship. Let us pray. Hallelujah to the King. Oh, yeah, hallelujah, we praise your name. 
praise the name of Jesus Christ. Because that name is the only name whereby we must be saved. Hallelujah. How many know that he has come Hallelujah. to dwell with us? He has come to save us. And if we accept the calling that he has given us, we will be saved. Amen. We know that he came as a human, but he was God and man, all wrapped up in one. And he is that living word. Bread of heaven sent down from glory. Anything you were on earth, a holy king, a carpenter. For you are the living word, saying, Bread of heaven sent down from glory. Sent down from glory. Gentle Redeemer, God with us, God with us, the living truth, and what a friend we have in you, for you are the awesome ruler, gentle Redeemer. His name say Jesus 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 that's what we call you that's what we call you angel born angel born put on a tree you died to save you man the tea for you are the Jesus Jesus that's what we call you What we call you. You are the living 
Inside of us, it's the very air that we breathe, it's the very essence that makes us who we are. Without that spirit, we are nothing. Yes. 
to the altar those that would kneel at the altar come kneel at the altar but we need everyone kneeling wherever you may be just focus on the power of God in your life and all the things that he's done for you as we are preparing for prayer I want to give an opportunity for anyone that would like to call out the name of some individual that you would like to request special prayer for at this time. We want to just lift their names up and present them as a church family unto the Lord. I would like to start out by lifting up Pastor Arnett and also our daughter Monica Tagore. Amen. Are there any others? to also lift up uh, Daddy Sorrell and also Gloria Owen. I want to lift her up in prayer as well. Amen. If there's anyone that would like to make your way up to the altar, you can come and do so at this time. Come and humble yourself before the Lord. Leave it all at the altar. Father God, we come this morning praying that your Holy Spirit will abide with us as we come together in prayer. We thank you, dear God, for life, health, and strength that you've given us one more day. We thank you for your love and your mercy and your grace. For Lord, we know that no one else loves us like you do. And you 
you prove it every day by taking care of us and keeping us as we go to and fro and providing for us and sustaining us. And even when we don't do what we are supposed to do, you still are faithful to us. You still bless us and you still provide an opportunity for us to accept your will and give us the choice to make whether we choose life or whether we choose death. We pray, dear God, that those that are here today will choose life and allow you to fill us and use us in your service to be children of yours and light in a, the place of darkness. For Lord, there's so much darkness around us from our homes to our jobs to our communities to the nation that we even live in. We see the darkness and the evilness of those that tend to want to do the things of their desires and their hearts and not the will of you. We pray, dear God, that you would forgive us for our shortcomings and allow your mercy to abide with us. For, Lord, we know we need you in our lives. And without you, we can't make it. And we see it. Our choices and our thoughts are not like your thoughts. But we are praying that your Holy Spirit won't leave us and to our own selfish desires. But keep working on us and keep moving us closer to you. We fall so many times, but Lord, we know that your Holy Spirit is there to pick us up and dust us off and give us another opportunity if we choose to. Lord, you've heard the names that were called out this morning. You knew them before we even called them out. But everyone that called them out, called them out, believing that you would answer their prayers and hear their petitions. Some need healing in their bodies. Some need peace of mind. Some need safety. Some need your provisions for, Lord, we all need you most of all whatever they stand in need of the, the names that were called out we pray and thank you in advance for blessing them and providing for them for Lord our desires and our thoughts that we think that they need may not be what you want them to have but we submit our wills to yours and allow you to have control of those situations and we trust you God we trust you to make the right choices and for Lord you spoke and the world came into existence and we know that's all you need to do we know that you can even think of things and they happen for Lord we pray that you would continue to abide with this place and this church and this fellowship we pray that you bless them, each one, those that are here today and those that had a desire to be here. It's no happenstance that we're here right now and that we're lifting you up in prayer. But Lord, we want most of all to be ready when you come back. For all of this toil and trials and situations that we may be going through, will be for now that we are not ready when you return. Prepare our hearts. Give us a desire to share that love with others and share that message with others to let them know that you're coming back and you're coming back soon. The signs are all around us. Even the blind can see. But Lord, prepare us keep us we thank you we thank you for being merciful we thank you for being merciful 
we thank you for your glory. Let it abide with us this day. And we ask this in your son Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. now that you stand for our hymn of the morning joy to the world the Lord is come scripture reading which is found in the book of Matthew chapter 1 verses 18 through 25 we will read responsibly Matthew chapter 1 verses 18 through 25 amen I see pages turning and it's also on our screen Matthew chapter 1 first book in the New Testament Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 through 25, and we will read responsibly. When you have it, say amen. amen. All right. The word of God says, now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, Fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet saying, Be 
Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him and took unto him his wife, verse 25 together, and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of our Lord. Amen. I've been waiting for somebody to say, well, why are we singing Christmas songs now? And why are you reading scriptures about the birth of Christ now? But I've thought about it also, and I figure some of y'all already know why. Amen. Because this is actually the season of time, the season of the year when Jesus Christ was actually born. I know some of us waiting on December the 25th. Jesus wasn't born nowhere near December 25th. Amen. And if you look at the accounts of the Bible, you realize that the time that Jesus was born was doing what is called the Feast of the Tabernacle, when God would come to be with man. And that time period or celebration was held between the middle of September and the middle of October. And that's why now we are celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ. Amen. Aren't you glad that he was born? Don't you thank God that Jesus came to save us from our sins? Amen. And I, I, I can't speak for you, but I'm mighty glad. I'm mighty glad. But you know, he wasn't only born, but he had a mission while on this earth. And that mission was to save us from our sins. His mission took him all the way to the cross on Calvary. And then the Bible says that he gave up his life, shed his innocent blood for our guilt and our shame. Went down into a borrowed tomb, belonged to Joseph, and he stayed there for three days. And the Bible says then he got up early on the first day of the week, got up with resurrection power. And that now he is interceding for you and me with his Father in heaven. Aren't you glad about that? I'm mighty glad about that. Because, because he lives. We have hope for tomorrow. Because he lives, all our cares are cast away. Because he lives, we have eternity promised to us because he lives. I'm mighty glad that Jesus lives. Amen. And I count it an honor to be able to appreciate his birth during the season that he was actually born. Amen. Amen. Now we have a new member and we haven't had a chance to fellowship him yet. And we're going to ask Brother Samuel if you'll come and stand up front with me. And we're going to ask the church family to just make your way around and just just hug on him and love on him and welcome him to our church family. Amen. Let us all stand.
Let the church say amen. 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 We thank God for you, Brother Samuel, and we're looking forward to you just doing what God tells you to do as you fit in and take your responsibility. Amen. We got you. We got Sister Smith. Amen. And we thank God for each one of you. Um, I don't know, do we have special music this morning? You're doing special music? Okay, all right. Well, we're going to ask Sister Smith at this time to bring us a special selection. is a mystery. We don't understand his ways. His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. But I do know one thing about our God. He's a just God. He's a righteous God. He's a holy God. And you know something? He's my God. Amen. 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 We're going to now go to the screen for our announcements and we're going to do something that might seem a little strange right now. But you know, I just turned a year older and I think I can uh, take some privileges today. Amen. Me and baby sister back there, we, we're going to take some privileges to, to, today as we go to our announcements on the screen. We're going to all read the announcements out loud together. Because I have folk that we, we have the announcements on the screen, Brother Samuel, and then they'll come and ask me, the very thing that the announcement on the screen already said. So we're going to read them out loud today and make sure that we have had an opportunity to uh, at least know what the announcement says and then govern ourselves accordingly. Amen. Let's read together. You can now pay your tithes and offerings online. All right, don't worry about reading that address right there because you're not going to remember it anyway. But you can now pay your tithe and offering online. All right, please pray for Monica Carter Tagore 
Elder Mary Gowdy, David Sorrell, Sr. Amen. Next announcement. Holy Communion, October 7th, 10 o'clock a.m. All right, everybody read now. That, that knows how to read. Everybody read. Uh, that's right. And two, no, one week. That's next week. That's next week, Brother Ken. That's next week now. All right. Agape Christian Fellowship Church, Musicians Appreciation, October 8th at 4 o'clock p.m. That's Elder Smith's church. They have invited us to come to their musician appreciation. Next announcement. Citywide Street Ministry, every third Sabbath at 2 o'clock p.m. All right. Joint Worship, Genesis Full Gospel Baptist Church at Turning Point, Saturday, 28th of October, 2017 at 9.30 a.m. Very good. Y'all doing good. All right. Next announcement. Bible study every Wednesday, 6 o'clock to 7.15 p.m. All right. Good, good. All right. Foundation of Prophecy Bible Seminar every first, second, and third Thursday, 6 o'clock to 7.30 p.m. Very good. Very good. Announcements. Please turn in announcements by each Wednesday to Deaconess Latasha Franklin. <laughs> Amen. And I believe that concludes our announcements for the day. Amen. Amen. Now, we're going to get ready for our tithe and offering. And what I want you to do today, you know, Elder Gowdy has been sick for a while. And we want to send her a care package today. If you have whatever extra you have today, I want you to just put it as loose offering in the box. All of the loose offering today, we're going to give to Elder Gowdy. I got a, a figure in my mind, but I'm just going to see what God blesses us with. Because we want to show her our tangible love. I know that we've been praying for her and lifting her up. But we want to show her our tangible love today as well. So I'm asking you to, I know you've already made your tithe and offering envelopes up. But if you would, reach back in your purse or reach back in your wallet and pull out some extra dollars and put them as loose offering in the tithe box. All of the loose offering today is going to go to Elder G Gowdy to just help her because being sick is costly. I don't know, do are y'all aware of that? It, amen, it, it, it costs to be sick. It really does. And she's been in and out of the hospital. Uh, she just moved recently as well, and that is costly as well. So we just want to show her some tangible love today. Amen? Amen. So whatever extra you can give today, put it as your loose offering in the tithe box as you come around. I'm going to ask our officers now to come to receive the morning tithe and offering. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Father God, as we prepare our hearts now to give to you that which you have given to us, we ask your blessings upon it in the name of Jesus. Father, bless each one that gives and bless those that had a desire to give but had not. In the name of Jesus, we pray and thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. In the hands of our officers.
Let us pray, Father, as we all stand, those that are able, those that are able. Father God, thank you for blessing us to give. For as we give, you give back to us. Take, Lord, these tithes and offerings. Let them be used for kingdom building. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And thank you, Father. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. All right. We got a very special, very, very special soloist today. Comes all the way from Jackson, Mississippi. And they're so special that they don't even know that they're going to do special music today. And we're talking about <laughs> none other than Elder Rosie Lee. She's going to bless us with a song today. And then we will have the word for the day brought to us by Minister Tanya Blevins. to you, O oh God, that it's not about us, but it's all about you. Lord, we submit our will to you. We submit our ears and our hearts to you, O oh God. We submit our eyes to you, Lord, and even our, our words and our thoughts, O oh God, 
We just pray, Lord, that you would just be with us in this hour, that we will hear the word and to do the word and to live the word. Lord, I just submit myself, Lord, to you as a humble servant, oh God, for you to use as you see fit, Lord, to bless your people and to encourage them as you see fit. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. to thank God for this opportunity to come before his people once again the pastors and Pastor Arnett in her absence to the elders and the deacons and other ministers of this house and to those that are watching there is a word from the Lord and I will be reading from 1st Thessalonians chapter 5 and if you will stand for the reading of God's word and that's 1st Thessalonians chapter 5 and it is on the screen and I will read starting with verse 14 and it says now we exhort you Brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient toward all men. See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. Verse 16 says, rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Jesus, Christ Jesus concerning you. And we are going to springboard from verse 16. Rejoice evermore and the title of this message is a joyful heart you may be seated in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ in our leading scripture the apostle Paul says in verse 16 to rejoice and to rejoice means to be full of cheer now, the reason why I had to go and kind of do a little research on what prompted Paul to give such a short message, but a powerful message in just those two words. And I found out that the church of Thessalonica was being persecuted. And Paul, who had formerly been imprisoned in Philippi, he was sending encouragement to this church because this was a Gentile church. And so there were things that were happening to them that they didn't quite fully understand. And their faith was getting a little shaky. And because Paul had experienced persecution himself, he knew firsthand on how his faith could keep him in the mist. So he sent this letter as a, a word of encouragement. And not only to just encourage them, but also, also to warn them and to provide them with reassurance. How in the midst of trials and problems and despair can we be full of cheer? We are living in times where we're being persecuted for our faith. And we haven't reached the times that the church of Thessalonica has reached. We hadn't got there yet. But when we're on our jobs, when we're in the grocery store, or in the laundromat, or even at school, and people know that you're a Christian, they're going to try you. And that's a form of persecution. 
They're going to mock you, oh, that Christian, that holy roller. And because we're human, we, we desire to be accepted. We desire to be loved. Those, those, those are emotions and feelings that God has given us. There's nothing wrong with that. And so when we feel that people are kicking against us, all because simply we love Jesus, sometimes it can be discouraging. Sometimes it can make us feel like we're all alone. So how is it? That in the midst of all of the things that this church was going through, Paul could tell them to rejoice. How is that even possible? How is it even possible that even now with the trials and tribulations that we face, that we can just be happy all of the time? That as people of faith, the question even sometimes have even come to me, is it, is it a sin? To not be happy? Is it a sin? Is it a sign that I don't trust God when I'm not walking around happy? Is that a sign that I don't trust him? So how does God see it? And we're going to look at a few verses, a few scriptures about joy. And one of the things that I found was that joy has different meanings. And it doesn't mean the same thing in each one of these scriptures. And we're going to take a look at four of them, and then I'm going to sit down. I'm going to get out of your way. And the first one is Psalm 51 and 12. And it says, Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. In this scripture, the word joy means to welcome. <laughs> I don't know about you, but to be saved is not always a walk in the park. You don't always feel welcome. And it seems that the moment that you decide to follow Jesus, all hell breaks loose. Everything that could go wrong seems to get worse. I didn't say that it seems to go wrong. It seems to get worse. Mercy. But the psalmist David who wrote this, he asked the Lord to restore the joy of salvation to him. See, in this psalm, the prophet Nathan had just confronted David of his indiscretion with Bathsheba. So now David was a man who was now convicted of the sin that he had committed. He had dug a ditch that he couldn't get himself out of. You know the story of the things that he had done. So when David penned this song, he was asking in desperation for God to give him that first love back. He says, I want it back, that, that joy. I want you to welcome me back. Like when I first came to you and repented, I want you to receive me the same way. I want to have that same feeling about being saved and covered. I want to have that same feeling back. That's what he was asking, to be welcomed. We're talking about a joyful heart, a heart that is desiring to feel welcomed by the Lord. Just as David's heart mourned with grief and that he was truly sorry for the mess that he had made of his life, God in his love does the same thing for us and welcomes us into his protection and covering, even when we mess up. See, see th this particular psalm, this was a prime example of God's love for us, how he welcomes us. He doesn't like the sin that we commit, but he welcomes us when we're ready to come back home. The next scripture is Nehemiah 
8 and 10. And it says, For this day is holy unto the Lord. Neither be ye sorry, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Now we talked about the joy being our salvation. Now we're going to talk about the joy being our strength. In this verse, the word joy means to be glad. See, when you know who you serve, when you know who is your protector, when you know who is keeping you, you don't have to be sorry. And see, this is, what, this is what the prophet was saying. He's saying you don't have to be sorry. When you know who is protecting you, when you know who is covering you, when you know who is providing you and keeping for you, you don't have to be sorry. There's a saying where people say that favor ain't fair. You don't have to be sorry because favor is not fair. You don't have to be fearful because God has you. And when you are at your weakest moment, when you are at the point to where you are about to break, that's when God's strength kicks in. When we ask for it. See, we expect God to just to start moving and kicking in when, when everything is going good. <laughs> when we doing everything right. That's when we expect in the favor to move. But God's ways are not ours. His thoughts are not like ours. When we're at our weakest, that is when he steps in. And so Nehemiah was saying, regardless of how you're being ridiculed, regardless of what people are saying that you can't do, that you're not equipped to do, look at how you betrayed your God before. You think that he is really going to give you grace to rebuild the city? Do you really think that he is going to favor you after you have turned against him? Nehemiah says that we are not to be sorry. That even when you're weak, even when you are feeble, he says that the joy of the Lord is your strength. See, God gets happy when we come to him. When we're weak and we're broken and we just say, have mercy. He gets happy. He's like, oh yeah, it's time for me to do my work now. And in turn, that makes us feel happy because it's like, I got a defender. I got a protector. I got somebody who is going to stand up for me. Even though I'm a mess, even though I'm weak and I don't feel like I can do this. I got joy. Because he is my strength. And see, if you see in this scripture, it says that the joy of the Lord, it didn't say the joy of man. It didn't say the joy of the preacher. It didn't say the joy of your spouse. It said the joy of the Lord is your strength. Hallelujah. There's nothing like the joy of the Lord. See, the joy of the Lord is that he don't mind loving on you. He don't mind protecting you. He don't mind keeping you. It is a pleasure to him. It's not just a duty because, you know, we do stuff because, okay, well, it, the Bible say, you know, I got to love everybody. So let me go on and do this. See, that's a duty to us, but it's not a duty to him. It is a joy. It is a pleasure to him. And to know that somebody loves you like that, who will and can give you strength to stand up against any enemy, any situation, and any problem, any foe, that's joy. That's joy. Psalm 30 and 5, which is a familiar scripture, it says that for his anger endureth for a moment. In his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. So we've talked about that his joy, is, the joy of his salvation. We talked about the joy of the Lord is our strength. And now we're talking about that joy comes in the morning. And the New American Standard Bible version says it like this. And I like this. And he says, for his anger is but for a moment. His favor, get this, is for a lifetime. Weeping may last for a night, but a shout of joy comes in the morning. This Particularly, this version right here actually tells what the definition of joy is in this scripture. And joy means a shout. It means a loud proclamation. Like you just standing up and telling the world 
good news. So he says here, he says that his favor is for a lifetime. Oh my God. See, no matter what you're going through, no matter how many times you've messed up, See, this is, this is for the, the, the sinners that, that are saved by grace. This, this ain't for the, the ones that's already made it to heaven. This is for the ones that are sinners. Just We just barely saved by grace. It says that no matter how many times you've messed up, the heavenly host, this, listen to this, the heavenly host, they shout, screams over you. Oh, my Lord, that even in the midst of your darkness, they're already shouting. They're already screaming over you because they know that God's favor is for a lifetime over you. That his favor, his love and his desire for you is for your entire life. Like you and the, the, your team is winning. You get your the adrenaline is pumping. You revved up and it's like you feel so empowered that you can do anything because your team is out there winning. That's how the heavenly host is. That every single time that when we're in the muck and the mire and we lift up our eyes unto the hills. We ain't even made no other moves yet. We hadn't even said, God, I'm sorry yet. But we just lifted our eyes. The heavenly host is just cheering. The bleachers are just rumbling. They're cheering. Because they're saying, now God's getting ready to come in now. We're getting ready to send in the quarterback now. We're getting ready to send in the star player right now. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Joy comes in the morning just on the other side of darkness when we can't see it. And the heavenly host is just screaming. That's what that word joy means in this scripture. It means a, a, it means a scream, a loud shriek. And I was like, a loud shriek? I'm thinking, you know, like ghosts and stuff, you know. But then I had to look at it a little bit further. It means like a, a screech of joy, a shout to wake you up. So can you imagine that when we are down and in despair and the Holy Spirit says, look up. We hadn't done anything else yet, Pastor. We just looking up. The heavenly host is screaming and shaking the very foundations of the earth that the demons are just shaking. They're trembling because they're wondering what is going on. And all you did was just look up. That's all you did was just look up. I just thank God for the joy that comes in the morning may not even be here yet Deaconess Lang but it's coming it's coming and I just thank God for that that even in the midnight hour and maybe y'all ain't had no midnight hours but I've had plenty I've had plenty that where I can't sleep and all I can think of is just to look up and say God I don't know how I don't know where. I'm just going to look up. I ain't got strength to even raise my hand, but I'm just going to look up. And to know that the heavenly host is shouting over me because victory is coming, even though I don't even see the victory. And see, that does something for my heart. That changes my heart. That changes my thought process of now when I'm going through. Because now I know that the heavenly host is shouting. And I know that God's favor is for my entire lifetime. No matter what I do, his favor is still there waiting. And all he's saying is you just got to come get it. It's there. next scripture and this is the last one psalm 16 and 11 and it reads like this thou will show me the path of life in thy presence is fullness of joy at thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore glory that's a sermon by itself 
So I looked up joy in this scripture. And it means exceeding pleasure, which means that it is beyond what we can even think. Beyond what we can experience. Now, everybody in here that knows me know I love to eat. That's, that's pleasure to me, is to eat. My soul is happy when I eat. But this scripture, it says it is exceeding, which means it's above what I can already experience. And I'm like, can I eat? We can't even imagine that. Because it's above what we already define for ourselves as pleasure. That's crazy. Like, how can you exceed that? See, if we want to experience the pleasures of God's hand, we have to meet him. God will show us the way because it says in this psalm that if you would show me the path of life, because in your presence... There's the fullness of joy. There's the completion of the pleasure that exceeds that I can't even imagine. That's pretty much what he's saying, which is infinity. There, there is no end to it. It's over and over and over and over again. See, at some point, I got to stop eating or I'm going to get sick. But see, this scripture is saying that the pleasure just keeps going on and on and on and on and on and on. And it don't just stop at the level to how we see pleasure, but it exceeds that. And it gets becomes more and greater and greater and greater. There's no end to it. When we come into the presence of of the Lord. He says that thou will show me the path of life. You want to really live? Get in the presence of the Lord. Get in the presence of the most high God. We shortchange ourselves when we just minimize God. Oh, God can only do this. And then we have all these dreams because God, he still gives us dreams. And we have all these dreams and goals, things we want to do. And we, we, we just say, oh, that's just a dream of mine. I'll never be able to do it. We are shortchanging God. Because the scripture says here that it, you will show me the path. I just got to get in your presence. That's all I got to do. I just got to get in your presence and you're going to show me the way. See, I like Joseph and how he had all these strange, crazy dreams about cows eating cows and, and corn bowing down. He had all these crazy, weird dreams about stars and moons and all of that circling around. All this crazy stuff. And everybody was like, something is wrong with this boy. Maybe we've been keeping him a little too sheltered. He'd been in the books too much. But see, Joseph... He knew how to get in the presence because he knew that all this studying, oh, this makes me happy, but I know that there's more. And these dreams that I'm having, there's more. It don't just end right here at the dream for when I wake up and then the dream is over. There's more. So Joseph, he knew how to have a joyful heart. So he's walking around happy, even though he's having these crazy weird dreams. He's walking around happy and everybody is like wondering, why is this boy happy? What is wrong with him? Is he crazy? But see, he knew that if I just get in the presence, that the stuff that makes me happy, God's going to exceed that. Even when I don't see it. See, God, he doesn't ask us to see anything. I remember some years ago, pastor preached a sermon, I don't see why. See, God don't ask us to see. He asks us to trust and to walk. That's it. So, he don't ask us to see anything because he says, I am the light. He says, I am the truth. I am the way. You want to know where you need to go? Just follow me. And if you got a downcast heart, if you always sad and depressed, and I just don't see why. I don't see how. You know what's going to happen? Your eyes are going to get closed. 
And Satan is going to start directing you because of your vision. He's going to start directing you by your eyes. And just like how you're sitting right here and you're looking at me, you, you're watching me. But you ain't moving. You're just sitting there. You're just sitting there. Looking. God says, I ain't asked you to look at nothing. I ask you to get up and walk. Walk with joy. Because you know I am the victor. And if you're following me, you're going to be victorious. You're going to receive exceeding joy. You're going to receive the favor that is over your life that I breathed into you before you even breathe the breath of life. I had already put favor on your life. Glory to God. When I think about the goodness of Jesus, it makes me joyful. I get excited about the word of God. Even when all around me, it just seemed like there's chaos and there's a no here and there's a no there. No matter how hard I try, there's a no coming. But God says that in my presence is the fullness of joy. The completion of what you can't even see. I just need you just to walk. Walk the path. I'm going to lead you. I'm going to guide you. I'm telling you, a lot of times God will tell me to do stuff. And I'm like, well, I don't know how I'm going to be able to do that. I start giving my list. Well, I got this, and I don't have this, and I don't have that, and I can't do that, and I don't know how to say this, and I don't know how, I don't know how to word this. And God's like, stop. You're going to try to see it, or you're going to walk with me? got to walk and as I come to a close I don't I don't know about you but I, I want to be welcomed by God I want the joy of his salvation even in my mess I want to be welcomed into that salvation that protection I want to be happy and I want God happy over me I want favor that lasts a lifetime. I want the heavenly host to shriek in joy over me just simply because I looked up. I may have fallen a million times, but I would have been made it. I want to hear well done. I want to experience pleasure beyond my own comprehension that even in this life of salvation, when the going gets tough and the people of God are sometimes forsaken like the church at Thessalonica. I want to have that strength that keeps me focused on the God of my salvation. Not the God of this earth who seeks to steal, kill, and destroy. I want to have a joyful heart not to where I'm always smiling and bubbly, but that on the inside that I know that there is victory coming. That even in my frailties and, and my I don't know how and I don't know where and I don't know why and Lord, I don't know how to do this and Lord, I don't have this and I'm not as smart as this person. I'm not as pretty as this person. And I don't have as much money as this person. And I don't have this. And I, in the midst of all of that, I want to be able to still tell the devil, I still have joy. You've taken everything that you thought that you could take, but I still got joy. 
You've come against me on every hand, but I still got joy. I was once a sinner that I'm now saved by grace because I got joy. I used to wonder why the old people used to sing that. What are they talking about? That don't even make sense. But it makes plenty of sense. Because no matter what you got going on on the outside, if you got joy on the inside, you have strength to keep moving. That even when you're questioning God, you got strength to keep moving. Sometimes I get up out the bed and say, I don't see how I'm even making it to this day. But it's because of the joy of the Lord. Nobody can tell me he's not real because I know it ain't me that's getting up every day. Because every day I want to just throw in the towel. I just want to throw in the towel and say, I can't do this anymore. But it is the joy of the Lord that quickens my spirit and says, let's go. Because I know that every day I get up, it's a battle. It's a war that I'm fighting. Not only against the world, but within. It's a battle that I'm fighting. I just thank God for his joy. I thank God for his favor over my life. I just can't get past that. Just to think that even before I got here, he had already placed favor on my life. Then when I was out in the streets acting a fool, there was favor still on my life. When I didn't even know God, didn't want to know God, there was still favor on my life. The times when that gun went off and that bullet was supposed to pierce me and kill me, there was favor on my life. I know I'm not supposed to be here. I know I'm not supposed to be here. When that knife was put up under my throat to take me out of here, and I didn't even have the words to say, but in my spirit, all I could say was, Jesus, help me. And the countenance of my perpetrator changed instantly. See, y'all y'all, just hear about, this is real stuff. This is stuff that I know that I've experienced. I know that it's nothing but the favor of God. It's nothing good that I've done. God reminds me every day, it ain't you. It's the favor that I have placed over your life. And on my dark days, that gives me joy. It gives me peace. Then when I get up in the morning, my body don't want to act right. It don't want to get up like it's supposed to get up. And sometimes I can't remember the simple things. I still got joy. I still got joy, Pastor. First Thessalonians 5 and 16 instructs us to rejoice evermore that no matter what we are to trust God's promises I heard a preacher say to trust his hand and trust his direction because in his hand is authority in the Bible days the fathers when they were preparing to pass away they would always bring in the eldest son and they would extend their right hand to them. I mean, nowadays we do it as a, just a, a ceremony, you know, because it just seemed like it, it looks good. But in those days, it was because of passing authority. I'm passing over the favor. 
And if you already have favor over your life, and then somebody else gives you additional favor, so y'all don't get that. You don't get it. That if you already have favor over your life, Brother Samuel, that exceeds what you can even think. Can you imagine what you get when you get a double portion of it? Know this, that God will never lead us astray. He always has our best at the center of his heart. And we can rejoice forevermore. Father God, we just thank you for your people. We thank you for the favor that you have spoken in their lives and over them, over their families, over their ministries, their businesses, their jobs, their careers, their relationships to come. Oh God, we thank you. We thank you for the joy of your salvation. We thank you for the joy that comes in the morning. We thank you, Lord, for the joy that is our strength. We thank you, oh God. We thank you, Lord, that even in the midst of persecution, of, of, of fault finding, oh God, and unforgiveness, Lord, we thank you, Lord, that we can still rejoice that it's going to carry us through until you come. We thank you, Lord, for that promise that you said that you're coming back the same way that you left, the same way you're coming, with one foot on the earth and one foot on the mountain, and that it will separate, that your glory will cause the earth to shake and tremble, and that every knee is going to bow. Every mouth is going to confess that you are Lord. And Lord, we just thank you for that hope that people think that we're crazy because we love you. We thank you, Lord, for giving us the spirit, not of fear, but of power. love and of a sound mind and we rebuke any demon that has been assigned over our favor any spell any witch any warlock any sorcerer we bind them by the power of your right hand and we cast them into the dens of hell. And we release anointing. We release grace. We release mercy. We release the anointing that has been stored up over every soul in this building. Over every soul that is watching under the sound of my voice. We release it in the kingdom. In Jesus' name. As we continue to joy, to joy in you with a joyful heart. Amen. Come on and let's give God some praise right now. Come on, let's give God some praise right now. I still have joy. I still have joy. After all the things I've been through, 
I still have joy. I still have joy. I still have joy. After all the things I've been through, I still have, come on y'all sing it now, stand up now. I still have joy. I still have joy. After all the things I've been through, I still have joy. I still have joy. I still have joy after all the things I've been through I still now now us real old folk us real old folk around the age of baby sister back there we used to say it just a little bit different we say this joy I have the world didn't give it to me this joy I have, the world didn't give it to me. This joy I have, the world didn't give it to me. The world didn't give it, the world can't take it away. Then we'll say this love I have, this love I have, the world didn't give it to me. This world I have, the world didn't give it to me. This love I have, the world didn't give it to me. Oh, the world didn't give it, the world can't take it away. Then we'll, we'll make it plain, we'll say nobody but Jesus. Nobody but Jesus. We have to break it down and make sure they know who we're talking about. Y'all understand, right? Because somebody might be thinking we're talking about a girlfriend across town or something like that. But we want to make sure you know who we're talking about. We're talking about Jesus. The joy that Jesus gives. The, the love that Jesus gives. The peace that Jesus gives. Nobody but Jesus. Nobody but Jesus. Nobody but Jesus. Nobody but Jesus. Oh, this joy I have. The world didn't give it to me. This joy I have. The world didn't give it to me. Amen. Let's give God a praise offering. Let's give God a praise offering. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. In the midst of our storms, in the midst of our storms and tribulations, our hard times, our ups and downs, we know that we can still have a joyful heart. Thank you, Lord. Sometimes you're going through and you, you don't know how you're going to make it, but God gives us a joyful heart. Amen. Praise God. We want to thank Minister Tanya for that word today. Come on and let's give God another praise. Amen. 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 Praise God. Father, we thank you for what our eyes have seen and our ears have heard. We thank you for your word. We thank you for using your little servant girl today to bring us a word from on high. We thank you, Lord, that you have blessed us with your presence in this place, and we're praying for your continued blessings as we journey through the remaining portion of this day. Have your way, Lord, in our lives, Lord God, and help us always, Lord, to hold on to that joyful heart that you have commanded us and given us, Lord, to have, and we are thankful in Jesus' name. Bless everyone here. And thank you, Lord, again for what you've done for me and baby sister. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Bless us to turn the leaf on another year. 
we give you the praise, Lord. And we'll pray, Lord, that this year will be a year of blessings, a year of mercy, and a year of grace. In Jesus' name we pray and thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Amen.